Hey everyone, my name is Gamer Corey, and welcome back to another Red Dead Online video. Now in today's video, we are going to be going over the same three things that we go over each and every single day. And those are where you guys can go ahead and find Madden Nazar's location for today. All of the different collection cycle sets for the different collection sets. And then last but not least, we're going to go over in extensive detail all of the daily challenges so that you guys can make as much gold as possible here in Red Dead Online. Now, let's go ahead and just break it down and show you guys exactly where you guys can go ahead and find Madame Nazar first. And she's going to be located way up north, just north of Ansburg, which will be the quickest fast travel location for today in Roanoke Ridge. So if this is the only thing that you guys came here for today, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot, and it's greatly appreciated. And also, a thumbs up does mean a lot because it really does help me out. It helps the channel out, and honestly, if it helped you out, then it could probably help out somebody else as well. All right, so before we move on to the next thing, if you guys uh, want to join me on my live streams, I do live stream uh, a variety of games here on the channel. I do live stream. My main days are Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I do live stream on other days, and the best way to know about those days is to check out my website, which is GamerCorey.com. Or you guys can follow me on Twitter, or make sure that you guys are subscribed to the channel with all bell notifications turned on. That way you guys will make sure that you guys are notified as soon as I do go live on the other days besides the Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. Uh, the next thing is going to be the different cycle sets uh, for the collection sets that are available here in Red Dead Online. Um, I like to start with either the coins or the lost jewelry just because you guys do make the most amount of money in the shortest amount of time as possible. But the coins and the lost jewelry do require you guys to have the field shovel and also the metal detector in order to make sure that you guys can collect all of those sets. Uh, you'll make $540 in about an hour of time with the coins and a little bit more. Well, it's about that $540. Um, per hour with Lost Jewelry, it'll just take two and a half, two to two and a half hours or so in order to collect all, all four of those collection sets. Uh, the coins are going to be a part of cycle number five for today. And then the Lost Jewelry will be a part of cycle number two. Now the next four sets that I'm about to go over, you don't even actually have to be a collector at all to be able to collect these. Uh, but you won't be able to sell them until you actually become a collector so just kind of keep that in mind. You can only carry 10 of each of these sets. So once you hit that 10, those 10, you're not going to be able to pick up anymore. So it'd be a waste of your time to even try that. So I'm, you might as well become a collector at that point. I believe there are some discounts um, for 10 gold bars or so to get those um, different rolls, I believe, right now. Um, I might want to double check on that. But if you guys have some gold, I would definitely recommend getting the collector roll as soon as you possibly can. All right, um, the next sets are going to be the American Wildflowers are going to be a part of cycle number four. The tarot cards are also going to be a part of cycle number four. We have bird eggs and antique alcohol bottles, which are both going to be a part of cycle number two. Like I said, all four of those different collection sets can be done without even being a collector at all, or if you guys are lower rank and just need some extra cash before you guys can buy the field shovel and also the metal detector. Now the next two are gonna be the arrowheads and also the family heirlooms. However, you do need to be a collector role in order to collect any of those uh, collection sets. And the arrowheads are gonna be a part of cycle number six and the family heirlooms are gonna be a part of cycle number two. Um, if you guys really need a more descriptive thing of the cycle sets um, and you guys were wondering um, just a little bit more about them basically it's like rolling a dice it, they can basically be determined in between cycle number one and cycle number six each day it can change sometimes they can stay the same for each repetitive day just so that you guys are aware and if that does happen where they become the same so like coin cycle two today is the same as cycle two tomorrow then whenever the last whatever piece that you pick up it's 24 hours from the time that you pick that up you will have been you'll be able to pick it up again so if you're picking it up last minute then you might not be able to participate in the next cycle that comes around so just be aware of that going forward all right so let's go ahead and move on to the daily challenges because that's what a majority of people actually come here for today uh, the daily challenges is honestly one of the best ways of generating gold here in Red Dead Online. You can actually earn 11 gold bars each and every single day. 
Um, there are two requirements that you guys need to have. Number one, you have to have daily challenges. Just complete one daily challenge just for 21 days straight. So having a 21 day streak going on for the challenges. And then number two is you're gonna wanna make sure that you have all four of the roles that are available and making sure that you guys are at least a rank 10 in each of those roles. And that will actually give you access to three additional daily challenges every single day for a total of the 19 that you guys can go ahead and see on your screen. You guys can see that I'm at easily over that 21 days. Um, I'm at the 153. The 28 is a little bit uh, kind of off, but if you guys are new and kind of wondering about that, it's basically when you get a treasure map and you only get one treasure map, but in order to get the up to the 0.5 gold bars per daily challenge, you only have to actually hit 21 days straight. So that's kind of what the 28 days represents there at the bottom left hand of your screen. Um, there's always one daily challenge that's super easy to complete. It'll actually take less time for you guys to complete it than it does to actually log into Red Dead Online. So just remember that. And we're going to go ahead and start with those right off the bat. So I don't look at these, so let's go ahead and find out what they are together. So we have to eat five meats. That's probably going to be one that's going to be super simple. Craft a horse care item would be pretty good. Um, a majority of these, I think actually all of them do require you guys to have a... Um, fire a campfire and then visit a shop in rose that one's very 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 simple to get all right so let's go over the very simple ones obviously roads you just have to make your way to any of the shops there and well, actually while you're there you might as well stop at the campfire that's actually located right behind roads here pretty much right behind where the fence is at but it's right in this set right here otherwise there's actually another one in southfield flats there's like a, a tree then it's just a random campfire that's kind of chilling out over there. Either one of those campfires will do in order to craft up your horse care item. So if you're making your way over to Rhodes today, you'll be able to get the two of them completely finished. And then eat five meats. That's as simple as actually either ordering them um, from the catalog, which would be like the salted beef. So if we go in here and find the salted beef, that one technically should count. There we go. Otherwise, um, any of the ones that are in your satchel that you've actually cooked up, so these any of these provisions should count as well towards those. Um, let's see. Let's just look at what we have. I think I have. I think I have some that are actually really full. I just don't remember which ones they are off the top of my head right now. Oh, there we go. Big. I mean, I know I shouldn't be doing that because it's good for like PvP, but that technically should count for the meats there we go so you guys can do that or if you're really big into pvp that would be a really good option to start munching down on some of those big game meats just so that you guys can go ahead and uh kind of recover some of your health and whatnot and even get some golden cores in some of those pvp matches so that's kind of a good option so three of them are actually very very simple today in my honest opinion uh let's move into those some of the ones that are maybe aren't so easy uh, Non-player enemies killed while in cover. Now this one's actually going to be really easy, but it might take just a little bit of time. For some people, it might not take any time at all. Uh, there's a couple different ways that you guys can do this. Number one, you guys can go up to Van Horn, which is north of San Denis, north of where we're at. Or you guys can go over to these landing. Those are enemies all the time, even though they don't show up right, right away. You can do any of the free roam events. I saw that we had to defend yourself from an ambush. That would count, so you could hide behind like a tree or a rock, whatever. Um, another option would be any gang hideouts or any of the bootlegger missions that are either free roam events that are just kind of random scattered around like the basically um, like the gang hideouts would be. Or you could actually go and start a bootlegger mission through Maggie. Either one would actually work. So those are a couple different options to get um, the five non-player enemies killed while in cover. Um, the next one is going to be small uh, bird carcasses now there's a couple different spots that i personally really like to go for this number one is in the heartlands uh, specifically over by the heartland overflow kind of where my camp is actually based right now but in this general area you guys can find a lot of birds during the day uh the small birds that is and then in the great plains you can also find them all in this area um for the small bird carcasses as well so you just have to shoot three of them it doesn't matter which three just go ahead and pick them throw them on your horse um and then definitely keep them for when we have to sell the 20 carcasses within like a 10 minute period um the crypts or maybe even have that one today maybe it's like 10 carcasses in 10 minutes for you guys depending on what your current rank is at um 
successfully fend off an ambush. I'm going to give you guys a couple different locations. This is the last one. Well, there's a PvP one as well. Um, a couple of the ambushes that... I haven't had an ambush actually pop up in quite some time. Um, there's one up here in Cumberland Forest. Like right in this general area right here. There is another one that can happen at the bottom of Calban Seat right here. Another one that can happen at this intersection right here on the Dakota River and Bard's Crossing. Um, there's also one right here. And again, you can actually do like these inside of these ambushes. You could do the five NPCs killed while on cover. And then another really good location is over by McFarland's Ranch. And it would be right here outside of Stillwater's Creek. So those are some of the main locations that I've used. Um, there is one up in Big Valley as well, but I don't really, I haven't gone up there to be honest too terribly often, but it does happen right in this general area. So a couple different spots I marked for you guys on the map. So make your way to one of those and hopefully you'll get one of the spawn. If it's not there, then just keep riding around until you can find one. And then the last but not least is get one player kills from the hips in showdown, during any showdown. Um, you can use explosive rounds if you want. Otherwise, you you know, you get roughly eight minutes to do this in. So you just have to get one player kills from the hip. Just make sure that you're not aiming prior to doing that. So actually, I do think that the daily challenges for today are all relatively easy. And I think a majority of people will actually be able to get all seven of the daily challenges done and get that nice bonus um, at the very end. So let's go ahead and move on to the daily roll challenges. Now, a lot of the daily roll challenges are really simple as well. However, they not, might not be exactly the same for you guys because I'm also a rank 20 in each of the roles. So just kind of keep that in mind. So if they are different for you and you have any questions regarding any of them, then please leave a comment down below so that I can do my best to help you guys out. But we have to travel a distance of 4827 on the Moonshine Wagon while on a mission. Basically, that's doing two deliveries of Moonshine, roughly. Um, we have to drink our own Moonshine. So as soon as you start a strong Moonshine or have one sitting and ready um, to be delivered... You can drink your own with strong moonshine as long as you have the copper polished pot. That would be why, how you can make the strong moonshine. Maybe yours is weak or whatever. Um, just drink whatever is at the bar and you should be good to go. Uh, moonshine, a preferred type sold to a buyer. This, honestly, these two definitely go together. The distance and the preferred type sold. Make sure that you're selling it to anybody but Bert. That's what you'd want to do with that one. Uh, the next one is going to be the Trader Roll. We have... Uh, we have 10 small animal carcasses donated to crypts, so that would definitely count with the small picking up the small bird carcasses. So once you pick up the small bird carcasses and then have you know a total of 10 other animal carcasses, small animal carcasses, so bats, rats, um, western chipmunks, you've got crows, squirrels, uh, toads, bullfrogs, and then any of the small birds would definitely help for that. Uh, 20 donations in total, so 10 of them are going to be small animal carcasses, and then 10, 10, you know, 10 of them could be feathers or whatever else you can donate to Crips. Um, and then you just have to make $200 money made from trading. So the best way to do this is get 100 goods and then go ahead and sell them all at once, and then you'll make $250 for anybody that helps you and $500 for whoever the posse leader is. And if you do it by yourself, like with a local delivery, then you would make $500. So pretty nice. Uh, the next ones are going to be the collector roll. We have three arrowheads found and three lost jewelry found. So again, arrowheads are going to be a part of cycle number six, and the lost jewelry will be a part of cycle number two. Uh, three collectibles looted from non-player enemies. So basically all the different um, enemies that you're going to be killing as far as killing the enemies from behind cover, make sure that you loot them or any gang hideouts or any bootlegger missions or any of the bounty hunter missions whatever you do any npc that you can possibly loot loot them that's pretty much the only way that you can really get the collectibles this is going to be completely like non how can i explain this it, it's going to change from player to player so um one player could take and get this in probably like 20 loots otherwise the next person could take 500 people to loot before they actually get the three collectibles it's completely random when it comes to getting those three collectibles from NPCs. And then last but not least is the bounty hunter roll. We have to hog tie three bounty targets with a reinforced lasso. Honestly, if you're a bounty hunter, you should have the reinforced lasso anyway, so buy it as soon as you possibly can. We have to complete one legendary or hard uh, bounty. Uh, I prefer the legendary over the hard, personally. And then last but not least is to track three 
targets using Eagle Eye. Uh, the best way to do this is to track them when you approach the big yellow area. Otherwise, any time that you can actually track them, um, like if they run away from you, that would count to be as an opportunity to use the e Eagle Eye to track a tar target to see which way they ran. By the way, that is all the daily challenges done, gone over, and covered. If you guys do have any questions regarding any of them, then please leave a comment down below so that I can do my best to help you guys out. That is what I like to do here on the channel, help out as many people as I possibly can. So if there's somebody, maybe a friend that needs, you know, some help or some guidance in Red Dead, and uh, send them definitely my way. I would love to be able to help you. And talking and speaking about bootlegger missions, we have one just right over there that we can actually go ahead and participate and get maybe some looting going and maybe a few other things but if you guys did enjoy today's video or found it helpful in any way then don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below it would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated but until next time youtube you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it and you guys stay gaming